Well, it's that time of year again, and here we are early on on uh, a Monday morning at the uh, Feuerbach Fat Stock Show, the Christmas Fat Stock Show, big once a year event, biggest mart of the year, and people are beginning to arrive and unload their lambs for the competition and for the sale that's going to follow it later on today. Christmas Fat Stock. And uh, you can guarantee one thing today, you can guarantee there'll be lots of conversation, uh, lots of banter in the market, there always is. And uh, normally it's around things like prices or uh, Brexit at the moment or uh, things of that sort, very sober, sensible and mature conversation of course. But where it gets really impassioned and really vigorous is when we get onto the subject of rugby football and the Southern Hemisphere internationals that have been going on in the last few weeks. One of the big topics there has been what happens at the set scrum. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there have been changes in that department, certainly since I was playing loose head prop in my younger day. Well, it was a little bit noisy in there unloading sheep, so uh, we've come in here where the cattle are starting to unload, and it's that early so far. There's only one pen of uh, prime beef in here already. But thinking of beef, when we used to play rugby in uh, my young day, as I say, it's a little while back, uh, we didn't have any of these controls that are now active on the operation of the scrum and the setting of the scrum in particular. And of course, we were susceptible and liable to a lot more injuries. A little while ago, they introduced the, uh, the formula that you had to pack down and uh, the ref would give the command, crouch, touch, pause, engage. And uh, the idea was to make the scrum safer. Of course, it made it a little bit slower uh, and uh, that caused a few problems, so they've changed things a bit. And uh, now it's uh, crouch, pause, set. I, I, I'm having a little trouble getting around this. There was a bit of a fuss though, even though this uh, effort, this change had been made to try and speed things up. Uh, I was a little bit frustrated with the way that in the international against Australia recently, um, it was taking ages and ages and ages, even, even though this change had been made, still to set the scrum. And that's been the subject of some discussion in recent weeks around the T-Van, uh, certainly at the mart I've been in, and where I've been operating as a rural chaplain. To be honest with you, I used to prefer the old system, you know, crouch, touch, so you know you're not coming at them too far, from too far back to bang them about as you come down and form the scrum. Crouch, touch, see, within arm's length, Pause, get yourselves balanced and ready, engage. I guess we're fiddling around trying to make the game safer and, and better. But the old crouch, touch, pause, engage used to have a lot, to my way of thinking, to teach us about what Christmas is actually for and what it's about. Crouch. There's a verse in Genesis 6, 5, where God looks down out of heaven, way, way back. And he sees that he's made his world, it was great, but people have really messed it up a lot and messed up the system. There's, there's problems arisen, not just because of what they've done, but because of the way what they've done has affected the rest of the world around them. It's all thrown everything out of balance and out of kilter. And God crouches and he looks down out of heaven, as it were. And he sees that the inclinations of the thoughts of mankind were only evil, wicked, all the time. And when he did that, he was sorry he'd ever made people in the first place. Crouch. After crouch comes touch. See, God looked down out of that heaven and uh, he saw things were bad and he could see the implications they were going to be. People's behaviour was going to get out of hand from time to time and they'd need to be got in touch with kept in touch with, to try and control things until something could be done to make the situation better. God touched his people over the years, centuries, thousands of years, through his servants, the prophets, spoke to them, told them what was likely to happen if they carried on the way they were going, and then they did it, and then he had to call them back again, and start again, touch. God stayed in touch when actually many of us would have given up on somebody, as awkward as perhaps some of his people were. He stayed in touch, he spoke through his prophets, and through his prophets he spoke about what was going to happen next to put the situation right. And if you go along to any sort of form of Christian worship at Christmas time, you'll hear readings from people like Isaiah or maybe Malachi, some of the other prophets, 
Here's God staying in touch with people hundreds of years before he stepped in to actually act and could get things back on track again to tell them what he was planning. Staying in touch to keep them from running too far amok and preparing them for what he was going to do next. Crouch, touch, but interestingly enough, next came pause. Before God decisively stepped in to put things right with the Lord Jesus, and it's coming at Christmas, he let people stew in their own juice for a bit. There were 400 years when he didn't get in touch. 400 years to stop and reflect on where ignoring what God had said gets you. 400 years of silence from heaven. And towards the end of that time, we know people were getting a little bit worried, a little bit concerned. In fact, they were getting to their wit's end with waiting to hear from God again. It's a sign of his goodness when he stays in touch. It's a sign of our badness, relational failure, when we fail to pay attention as he gets in touch. Crouch, touch, and then God paused. Sometimes when God pauses, we really do get to stew in our own juice. Certainly at the Scrum there comes a time when you have to engage. There's no point messing around and making a good old dance at the start unless you get down and get on. And uh, certainly that is the case when it comes to Christ and Christmas. Christ and Christmas is about God engaging. It's about the God who has crouched down and seen the state of the situation. The God who has touched, stayed in touch with his people to try and hold them back and, and to prepare them for what was going to come and uh, paused, let them see the enormity of the situation and realise that they needed to focus their minds a little and then when the time had fully come, as it says in the book God sent his son born under the law to redeem those under the law to redeem, that is, to pay a price and buy back and get out of the mess that he'd gotten into to redeem those under the law so that they might receive the adoption of sons not just bailed out and left to it but brought back out of their relational failure into the family of God I don't just mean church I mean the broad spread of people across time and across human history across the world from every tribe and language and people and nation that he plans to have before the throne of God at the end God came into the world to engage with people in their human lives, in their messy lives, in their tangled lives. Not just to give them something to do on a Sunday morning, but to be involved and engaged with us. So that you might live wholesome, healthy, fulfilling sorts of lives. So there it is then. There it is. Christmas comes at the crucial point in the setting of God's relationship with humanity. It comes at the engage stage. It comes at the point where God comes down to engage with human beings who've gone away from the plan, away from the way things were intended, and have had time to pause and reflect and see where it's got them. Now, you know as well as I do that any scrum, it comes to pieces immediately unless the opposing sides bind, unless they bind tight to one another. And although God has crouched, looked down, seen the state of affairs, touched, tried to stay in touch, continue to lead people away from things that were going to be negative and hurtful and harmful towards things that were positive and helpful and useful, paused to let humanity see the extent of the situation and the seriousness of it, and sometimes he's given us individually reason to stop and think, what's going on here? He's also engaged. And he's looking for those who will bind with him. You want to know the meaning of Christmas? Here we go. God is going to great lengths himself to bail us out and get us out of the mess we're in. But here's the deal. Jesus approached a load of fishermen many, many years ago. And he said, follow me. Follow me. That's the invitation of Christmas. Well, the meaning is that God's come down to engage with us and draw us back and redeem lives that have been left in the state that they have by a rebellion against him. 
but he's looking for those that will bind and be part of it. And the question is, for you and for me, not just at Christmas, not just on Sunday mornings, whether we are ready to bind and be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ.